Greetings, greetings, family. We are live. Uh, Sister Shanice here. As you can see, we've got Dr. Abu in the house. Rise up, rise up, Dr. Abu. Good on family. Respect all the time. <laughs> and we have our sister Sheila rejoining us. Welcome, welcome, Sheila. I'm honored to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, it's a privilege to have you. Let's get uh, centered on the camera here. Uh, first of all, I just want to apologize to all of our live viewers for starting a little bit late. Um, we had a power outage <laughs> uh, 20 minutes or so before we were due to go live. And uh, But we've just got back power now and so starting. But I'm sure by now, you know, our regular viewers don't know how the thing go, you know. If we don't come uh, straight away, uh, on time, it's because the power has gone, you know, and I was just having a conversation here with Errol. We were saying, you know, the continent of Africa should not be experiencing power outage problems, you know. There's so much water, you know, lakes and rivers and seas, you know. Uh, we've got the wind, we've got the sun. We've got all that we need, you know, to have more than enough power to light up the entire continent. But we're in a situation where today, 2021, we're experiencing daily power outages. So uh, Mama Africa is calling for those who have the skills, those who have the talent, and those who have the knowledge, you know, to uh, bring electricity, to bring power, to bring technology to the continent. Oh, Sister Sheila, how are you doing? I am very fine, thank you. I give thanks. I give thanks for this wonderful day and wonderful evening to be here once again on this show. I am doing very well. Fine, thank you. How are you, Sister Shanice? Oh, I'm great, thank you. As you can see, I'm still there. So, you know, from me, I've read everything all right. So, <laughs> so for now, I'm just going to go and, you know, push through. And uh, it's a privilege and an honor to have you uh, again on our show, my sis. And looking forward to the discussion this evening. We are uh, expecting another brother to join us as well. Hopefully, you know, he will be able to come on um, uh, as a, a key speaker and because uh, we want to from him as well. So, Dr. Abu, uh, the Vudum T-shirts, would you like to remind the family that we're requesting them how they can get one of your Vudum T-shirts? Well, they can go at um, ADE Printers and Photography. Riley Market, our Safrika Organic Health Center, or they can contact me at Galaxy Radio, or they can go and check out my Facebook and, you know, contact me there. Yeah, please remind the family of your Facebook address. My Facebook address is Abu Jatata. That's it. Abu Jatata. Okay, family, now you know where to go to get one of those Voodoo t-shirts. So um, our family is just logging on. Thank you so, so much, family. Once you come in, please do give us a thumbs up. And at the same time, uh, please do let us know that you're in the house, where you're viewing us from. We'd like to know, you know, the kind of geographical reach that we have. Uh, I can see that we've got Sister Afri Jow in the house. And she's saying, greetings, Sister Shanice, Dr. Abu, and Sister Sheila and all of my African brothers and sisters worldwide. And she is watching us from Ghana. Wonderful, wow. wonderful. Afrijamo is saying the leaders are putting money in their pocket, but we can one with solar energy and more holes. <laughs> you know, it's a wicked thing. But, you know, on my radio show today, I was interviewing some uh, candidates who are going to be standing for election in one of the London boroughs. And in their particular London borough, they was actually talking about a 1.5 billion debt. That is a borough that has a geographical region of about three miles by three miles. And they have a 1.5 billion debt, not 1.5 million, you know, billion, right? So we know that that is 
big time backhanders going on, massive misappropriation of, of public funds. But you know, them still, they love pint finger at mm. Africa. Uh, this kind of thing are going everywhere here, sis and family, especially you know, here in the UK. They are the masters, you know, at, um, uh, at this sort of thing. So let's see who else we've got. We've got Brother Joshua in the house saying greetings to all tuning in from the 254. 254, what's 254? Let us know where That's that Kenya. is. 254 is Kenya. Oh, thank you, sis. Oh, welcome, <laughs> Brother Joshua from Kenya. We've got Ignite uh, tuning in from DC. Uh, we've got uh, Brother Bryant uh, in the house as well. Welcome, welcome. We've got Sim Taylor in the house greeting everybody. Ignite. Ah, thank you so, so much. Yeah, come on, everybody. We've got 50 in the house so far. Uh, we should have 50 thumbs up. Uh, let's hope we do have because we are going to get rolling quite soon. Um, so, family, certainly hope that you have been. Hey, we've got uh, someone from Texas as well, from Austin, Texas. Welcome, uh, Mr. Pirate Brain uh, from Texas. Welcome, welcome indeed. And, uh, you know, Dr. Abu, uh, I wonder if you could let our viewers know when your shows are on the big G, a Galaxy Afui. Uh, you know, some of them might want to uh, check you out on radio. Well, my show is on Friday evening from 3 to 6 alongside Jammers. And on Sunday from 8 to 10 by myself, then I hand over to Prophet Quaker. And on Monday from 4 to 6. Yeah, four to seven, you know, with jammers again, you understand? And yeah. it's all about looking at the issue that affects us, you know? That mm -hmm. is what my show is all about. I just look mm -hmm. at the issue that affects us. Absolutely. I, I, I am not into the illusion and the confusion, you understand? I'm just trying to find my way out of this maze. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As we all are indeed. Uh, we've got Kenya in the house as well. We've got New York, USA in the house, rising us up. Uh, welcome, welcome, Gigi. And uh, yeah, we've also can't log on, Sister Kunta. Oh, oh Kunta saying he can't log on. I wonder why. Okay, let me go back stage and just um, uh, see what we can do to assist our brother Kunta who is saying that he can't log on right now. Sister Sheila, do you have any announcements uh, that you would like to um, furnish our listeners and viewers with? Uh, the only announcement I have is to tell our people that it's always good to log in to stations run by us because it is time for us to narrate our own stories, to make our own stories, to hear our own stories. As Dr. Abu has said, this is the only way to log out of the matrix, to say no to the illusion and to start listening to the things that really affect us. So it's very, very important that we stop focusing on what is in the mainstream media, which actually means uh, media for other people and start dealing with our own media houses like this Galaxy Radio, like this show, because this is what we look at things that affect us and it's a show for us and by us. So for the people that are tuning in today, I say thank you, thank you very much. Spread the word. Tell people that we are here talking about our own stuff. And then also express interest to come to this show so that we can also hear from you. And this is the beauty of our own people. We don't have a tier system where we say, oh, you have to have certain degrees and you have to have certain qualifications and this. No. If suddenly I'm here talking to you, then it means any of you can be here as well. So for those listening, this is the place to be. This is home. That is what I'm telling you today. So thank you once again for this opportunity. Thank you. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Sheila. That's right. This platform is here for you, family. You know, if there's a particular topic that you want to jump on board and have as a theme for us to discuss, get in touch and we'll make it happen. I'll, I'll post my email address in there. I do get around eventually to going through all the emails. And uh, yeah, um, Brother Kunta, I have just resent the link uh, to you on WhatsApp. Just click the link and it should take you straight into 
uh, our backstage area. So um, hopefully our brother will be able to join us very soon. And, um, you know, because it's a really important discussion that we're going to be having uh, this evening. So I um, just want to start off the discussion, actually, um, by just reminding us of, of um, what we were talking about last strong. I actually shared with, with the family. Let me um, bring that list up um, again. Uh, it was last Wednesday. I'm going to uh, share screen. When we were actually looking at the list of uh, 170 high-profile Africans who had, you know, dropped out. And we were saying that this is too coincidental. So let me um, just go through the list here, just in case some of you are watching for the first time. Uh, these are the concerns that we had. And, you know, if you do a, just a little bit of reading about um, the kind of military forces and activities that's happening on the continent, it's not going to take you very long before you realize that on the continent of Africa, on our motherland, as we speak, there are a multiplicity of covert war operations taking place, militia group operations taking place, training, uh, of of um, armies, private armies on the ground of Africa, you know, and all of um, these operations uh, have the impact of destabilizing our countries, our nations, and our communities. And it also has the impact, you know, of totally disrupting family life, village life, and it's arresting our progress and our development on the continent. And so um, it was on our last meeting, uh, last strong, that we were looking at this list of 170 high-ranking officials, you know, including presidents, vice presidents, former presidents, you know, um, prime ministers who had been taken out supposedly by COVID, the vast majority supposedly by COVID and others, and then a few others a heart attack and one asthma attack. And, and the list that we presented were of these 100, of these 170 was all within one year, within one year. And you would have heard our brother Rasul on the last show remind us, you know, that as a people and as a continent, we are at war and we have always been at war. The war has never stopped. A war was waged against us from time ago, and it continues until today. But the nature in which, you know, we are going to be killed isn't necessarily by the gun. It's also by viruses and these biochemical weapons and, and poisons and things that can look as though, you know, that can trigger heart attacks, that can poison your liver and give you, you know, cancer within weeks. So, you know, the methods of assassination have changed considerably. And even since my last show, one of our outspoken leading medical professionals, Brother Dr. Sanja, who you know, was warning us in a video that went viral about the dangers of the C-19 jab, you know, the one I'm talking about, he has since passed on to the ancestors as well. And so, you know, it's very, very concerning that we have, oh, great, I can see we have uh, our brother Kunta that's joining us. I've been a while, my brother. So it's, you know, this list, this growing list, you know, is of major, major concern. And our sister was saying, you know, we're not waiting until the mainstream actually starts highlighting this as an issue. You know, our people have done the research. We are watching what's happening. And we are raising it as an issue on our platform because it is just so, so concerning. And, uh, you know, the, the list, it just goes on and on. And, uh, you know, all of this has the effect of distracting us from, you know, focusing on what's really important for the continent of Africa. And that's our economic development, 
our infrastructural development, our industrialization, our technological uh, development and advancement. Because we're having to divert finances away from all of that, you know, and putting it into the war chests of other countries. And, you know, obviously, as a result of that, our infrastructural development uh, suffers as a consequence. But our young people, you know, they are seeing the games that are being played and they're seeing the players as well. They're seeing who, you know, our allies are. They're seeing what's going on. And, you know, it's time for change. Absolutely time for change. This is a, a, a horrendous list. And, you know... We're going to say, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. You know, they did all die of COVID. But, you know, we've got hundreds, possibly thousands by now of um, scientists, doctors and specialists who are saying, you know, who, who have broken down for us the fact that, you know, a virus can only in, be inserted into you via a jab, you know, that you can't you know, get a, a, a virus, uh, well, you know, I'm not even going to go down that road right now, but there's enough intelligence information out there to make us all very sceptical about this whole C-19 agenda. And what we're seeing here, our Queen was saying last week, looks like a regime change. It looks like, you know, there are, there's a hit list, you know, a hit list and we've also recently lost the president of chad as well let me um stop sharing the screen so that um we can welcome our brother kunta greetings brother brother kunta please take yourself off mute how are you yes i'm fine sister i'm fine greetings greetings sister Greetings, brother Abu. Long time, brother. Brother, get down like this man. 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 Yo, 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 yo. yo. Your sister. Your sister. Nice, a, nice, nice. I couldn't connect, um, but now I'm in. Delighted if you managed to log on. Uh, great yes, to have yes, you on board because we have yes, such yes. an important discussion, matter for discussion today. Um, yes, sir, you know, yes, let me just. Quickly, before I introduce you, go back over to the chat just to let our audience know that, you know, if you want to comment, you can do so uh, in the chat. Uh, if you have any questions to ask, you can put your questions in the chat. You know, this is your way, uh, our valued audience, to contribute to the discussion that we're having today. Uh, so Sister Afrijamo is saying greetings, Brother Kunta. She's rising you up. And uh, Brother Ignite or Sister Ignite is saying, we do not have allies. We don't have allies. Gigi is saying, uh, thanks for confirming. I knew you said 177. Uh, I keep hearing from other outlets, 88. I thought I misheard. It's important to look at it more broadly uh, like this. So, yeah, there is a, um, a smaller list of 88, yeah, um, but a more broader list. Uh, uh, and if I said 77, it's now 171. That list was 170 when it was drawn up. Let me see if it's got the president of Chad on it, because if not, you know, it's, it's another two uh, very high ranking officials have just been added. So the president of Chad isn't on there. So he would have been 171. And then, of course, I've just mentioned that we've also lost another leading medical African practitioner, Dr. Stephen Karanja, yeah, uh, who was taken out with, within the last few days. And he, his video went viral and, uh, you know, he you know, and warning us about the dangers of the big V and why we, you know, as a continent shouldn't be um, embracing it. Uh, so let me um, ask our brother Kunta to introduce himself to uh, the Sister Shanice Show audience and panel members. All right then, greetings, greetings everybody. My name is Mr. Kunta, um, Senegambian, both side, you see? So you see, I'm, you see, I'm very lucky because I have both side, okay? <laughs> so um, today I'm gonna to be talking about Chad because Chad also is, is part of our people, it's our neighbor, you know? 
beating our place and Chad is only Guinea. So it's next door to us too. Okay? Um, I'm going to give you about the size of Chad. Chad is about 1,284,000 square kilometer mile. So it's about 39%, no, 39% 39, 39 more than Nigeria. Nigeria is 900,000. Chad, is, Chad is, is, is bigger than Nigeria. A lot bigger than Nigeria, okay? Wow. Did you say Chad is yes. bigger than Nigeria? Yes. Wow. Yes. 30%, 30, 36 percent bigger than Nigeria. Wow. 36 percent bigger than Nigeria. Wow. Okay. And the population is the population is, is only 16 million. Mm. Six 16 zero million, yeah. or one, 60 million. 16 million. 16. Yeah. Just 16. One six. 16 million. Wow. One six million, wow. yeah. For, for for the whole land, yeah. Okay. How could anyone ever okay. say that Africa is over, overpopulated? <laughs> <laughs> and Chad, they, they have the, the, the fourth highest fertility in the world. Fertility like they can have kids quick. Mm -hmm. In the world, mm -hmm. number four in fertility. Mm -hmm. So the country, you know, within 10 years, you know, it's going to be full. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Um, Chad is a different country from our places because Chad, they have a history that is, is a bit, uh, it's a blend of different nations, different nations. You have the Arabs, you have the Bantu, you have the Eastern, the Eastern, the Eastern uh, uh, Africans from Djibouti and all that coming down there. So even the president, the president, the president of, of, of Chad, uh, his name is Idris Debi. He's, he's from a tribe they call the Agahawa. Agahawa means in Somalia the people that come from the field of Awa. You hear know what I said? The Chad president, the Chad, is, is the from Chad a tribe. Uh -huh. It's from a tribe called Agahawa. Uh -huh. Agahawa. Uh -huh. is, is this tribe. the former? Is this the former president who was the name? Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah that, that passed away. Yeah, he tribe yeah. is called Agahawa. Uh -huh. But Agahawa. In Somali language, this means people that come from the feet of, of Hawa. Oh. Mm -hmm. Because I got a friend from Somalia. They said to me that the name Agahawa, it means in the language, the people that come from the feet of Hawa. Hawa is Eve. Eve. Right. Which means that the children of the feet of, of Eve. Of Hawa. Of the feet of Eve. Of power. Yes. Wow. Of Hawa, wow. Which is which the man of Christ. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That means that means the people of creation. You can check the chart. Right. You see. All right. Then. So in chart, in chart, you have different different nation. In chart, mm -hmm. you have Christian, you have Muslim. France used that division there in the sixties to put the Muslim against the Christian, but it didn't it didn't work because they realized that you know they are the same people. So Chad is two, you have Christian, you have Muslim, and they live together in harmony, in harmony, all right? The first person in, um, in Chad to fight for Chad, it was a guy from the West Indian. You're gonna be shocked, I'm gonna give you a surprise today. The first man to fight for Chad independence was a West Indian man. His name was uh, um, Gabriel Lisette. He was from the Caribbean. He came to Chad through the French colonial time. He lived in there. He created a party. The party was called People People Progress Party. And he, in 1957, and he was there fighting for Chad and France until the 60s. There was a lot of fights between the Christian and the Muslim. The Liban was involved. So what he did, he put he put into power his best friend, and he went behind the scene, and the best friend was Tomor Bay. So Chad actually, you know, the first person to create a party in Chad was, was from those Indies. You can go and search it. His name is Gabriel Lisset. I'm sure you know, I'm sure you know he might be from Martinique or Guadeloupe. But he was in Chad there and he created a party that led the public led the Chad to independence back in the 60s. And he stayed there and he died in there in Chad. But he was from those Indies. Okay? All right then. Let's go now to France. You see France, 
France never left Africa. And British Africa never had independence. Okay? Um, it's, it's very hard, but people don't understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, we hear you. France never left Africa. You said never. France they never left never Africa. Left they never did. They never did. They never did. Be the reason why, uh, you see, De Gaulle, De Gaulle, when he, when he was going to give freedom to the African people, he said to them, listen, you, you want us to leave? We're going to leave. But remember, France ain't got no friend. France only has interest only. They're going to say that, you know, African people, you know, you, you want to have independence? Take it. Take it if you want. But remember, France ain't got no friends. We don't have no friends. We, we only have interest. That means that, you know, France never left Africa. They use, they use the army. You know the army? The army. The army. You know the army? The French army is the tool. It's the tool France used to control Africa, the army. If you are a soldier, you have to go to France. You have to go to France, they brainwash you, all that, all that, all that. When you come back, you become part of them. Okay? When you say we become the part of them, so uh, they take the African army to France. Yeah, and they, they train them. And they come back as soldiers for France. For like, France. For France. To, to, maintain, to maintain the colonial structure. Okay? They live good. We, we, we call them the bourgeois soldier. Bourgeois. It's like, you know, like, they live good. They don't go to fight, really. They live good. They have nice houses. If you go, if you go to our area, they live good. The only, the only soldier that are no bourgeois is Chad. Chad, those when they are soldiers. So I'm trying to show you in Africa who is a soldier and who is not a soldier. Chad, they are soldiers. The, right. the, the, rest of Africa, the rest of Africa soldier, you know, they are bourgeois soldier. They are soldiers. They are uh -huh. bourgeois. You know bourgeois? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, my brother. Okay. So we've got two sets of soldiers. We've got those who were trained in France, and we've got those yes. who, you know, are African warriors who yes. have... But you only find them in Chad. Mm -hmm. But you only find them in Chad. You don't find them anywhere in Africa. Only Chad. Mm -hmm. Chad, they are soldiers. If you go to Gambia, Senegal, my those are you know, they're soldiers. Mm -hmm. They just wear the uniform and they live good. You know, they have yeah. good houses, yeah. they live good. To be a soldier yes. is to live good. But in Chad, mm -hmm. it's not like that. If you are a soldier, you, you have to go and fight. Okay? That's why Chad is a different place. All right. France use division in Chad. That's why Debbie, Debbie was killed by France. Because France, Debbie was saying to them that, you know, the, the CFA has to go. The currency has to disappear. November, he went to France. He went there, he said, now, you know, it's time to change. Because himself, you know, he was, he was the main, the main tool of France in Africa. But after- Who was that, the main tool of Africa? This was the former president, yeah? Of Chad, yes, the yes, yes. They, they use him. Maybe. They use him, you know. Yeah. Well, good. Let's get a bit okay. of history, shall we? My brother, uh, Kunta, I wonder if mm -hmm. we could get a little bit of history uh, about okay. maybe the oh, war wars in, in, in Chad okay. and of his role in all of that as well. Just so that before we come to let present day. Let, yes, thank let, you. Let me go there, you know. Debbie, Debbie came to power through a coup. Coup. Mm -hmm. he, he, came, he came with his man, he took over, you know, and chased a man. The man went to Africa, the man went to Senegal, they the called Abre. He just about, he came to power, Baku. but when he came to power, he had the support of, of France, you know already. The right. French helped him, isn't it? Mm -hmm. hmm? The French, they helped him because Debbie, when he was young, he was a, a very intelligent, he was a good soldier. They said that, you know, anything that I asked them to do, he's, he's always number one, running, number one. Sport, number one. Study, number one. Everything is number one. So he was a man who, 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 had, who had a good brain. He got a baccalaureate in science. So he, was, he, he got science studies. He went to France, so, so he's not a foolish man. He's very clever. They, they said that he's very quiet, very calm. He's just a soldier. Mm -hmm. He's a soldier. He, he, he's, not, he's, not, he's not a man who is a bourgeois. He's just a soldier. He came to power mm -hmm. by the coup, and he died. He, he died in the coup. 
uh, yeah. on the 11th of April, he met some people from Africa that came, came to see him. Among them, there was the son of Lumumba, Patrice Lumumba. His son was there, his son. So he said to the son that, your dad, he died as a martyr for Africa. But they, don't worry, there are many more, many more to come. So, so he knew that him too, you know, he's going to be a martyr. And that's on the 12th of April. Yeah. On the 12th of April this year. Wow. He, he said to that, you know, he said, he said, he said, he said to, to the son of, of Lumumba that your dad, he died as a martyr for Africa. But don't worry, mm -hmm. there are many more to come. Many matter. Okay? Mm. So he was part of them. Okay? So this man here, you know, he, he came to power through a coup. He said it for a long time. But you see, African democracy, sometimes it's not necessary. Democracy is a joke. Because in Africa, you know, it, it's, it's a, democracy was used to maintain Africa, you know, divided. Because after slavery, after we were colonized, we're trying to unite now. They bought democracy now. Yeah. Democracy, it creates tribalism. It creates tribalism. It creates division, division of nation. And mm -hmm. people are put apart, family, mom and dad. So democracy, we don't need that in Africa. That's why the mass that, you know, democracy sometimes is not necessary because it, it, create, it, create, it, create, it creates confusion in the country. Okay? Mm -hmm. We don't have the mind. We, we don't have the mind for democracy. Democracy is only when everyone is, I'm not hungry, you're not hungry, I have water, you know, everything is fine. You can talk about democracy. But in nation where, nation where poverty is so chronic that you can't talk about democracy in there. You have to talk about oneness. We, we all work together, we move from the poverty, everybody got something, something to live on, and now you can talk about democracy. Democracy, we don't need that. It was used by the European to disrupt Africa growing up from the aim to unite as a nation to go forward. You see, this, this man here, he knew that. Debbie, he said that, you know, I will never allow any nation from foreign, or this jihadists to come and destroy Chad and the neighbor countries. So he stood for that. He stood only him, he, he believed that, you know, he, he's a soldier, he'll go to fight. He'll go to fight. Okay? So a, a man like that, you know, you can't, you, you can't insult him and say bad about him, even though he, he was not perfect. But at least mm -hmm. he has a mindset. He loved Africa. And he loved his people. And he wanted the country you not know, to go forward. Even though he he he, he was not he was not a politician. He, he's a soldier. But he knew that this country here, because Chad, people are strong people in Chad. So they need to have a strong leader. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Chad is not mm -hmm. like it's not like Gambia and Senegal. Chad, Chad people are strong people. Strong people deserve to have a strong leader. They're not soft mm -hmm. people. The Chad, the Chad people, Chad people they are strong people. They right. like to fight. They are warriors. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if you have a warrior nation, you know, you need to have a strong warrior to rule them. That's what the man said. He said, Chad, they don't like anybody in Africa. They are strong people. So you need to be strong. This man here, you know, he faced, he faced 22 coup. 22. Eight, bloody. But he escaped. So this guy is a true soldier. If you can escape 22 coup, no coup, coup d'etat. If you escape 22, the man was a strong man. But the only thing that he, he, he made a little mistake because... He trusted the French. Mm -hmm. He sent soldier. In, he, he sent soldier in Mali to fight to, to fight for Mali. When the GIs came to take Bamako, he seemed that's in the troop there. His son, his son was there fighting in the, in the front. The, the young boy, the, the young boy, you see the boy in power now. He's a warrior. He was fighting in the front. So you see Mali, Mali Chad. You see Chad, Chad saved Mali. Okay, he did. But he did that, he did that for, for, for Africa, but also for France to please them. But they betray him. They betray him. France betray him because France, they wanted a change of regime. A change. Okay? And to change regime, they have to create confusion because France, they have a base in Chad. They have all the weapons. If, 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 if the, the rebels are coming in the country, now, they can see them. They can see them. They have, mm -hmm. you know, they're in Chad. So anyone that can you know, they have enough. I'm not a soldier, but I'm sure you know they have the, the tools to see them coming. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Why France? Why France didn't go and arrest the rebels before they kill the man? Right. So let's let's get a little bit of interaction here, uh, Brother Kunta. Mm -hmm. Thank you so so much. Mm -hmm. 
for opening okay. up the discussion for us. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know, our panel and our audience already have lots of questions that they want to ask mm -hmm. and points of clarification. Mm -hmm. uh, but thank mm -hmm. you so, so much. Let's first of all go over to uh, Dr. Abu. Dr. Abu, any questions, any comments uh, from you uh, uh, regarding uh, the opening from our brother Kunta? Rise up, rise up, brother Kunta. You know, I I couldn't put it better, you know, and this is what true we are a lot of us we doesn't understand military science. Mm -hmm. You know, see it, you know, we get caught in this because democracy really is European cultural aggression. Sure. We have to understand what it really is. It is European cultural aggression. It is. They, 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 they export it in your country to cause mishap, confusion. You understand? And some of us, we don't know that. You understand? I mean, I was in the army, in the British army. So I know, I know about um, reconnaissance <laughs> and I know about ambush. You understand? You know? mm -hmm. That was a complete ambush. You understand? And this is how they set up certain things, you know? You know? The whole thing that, that, that we have to know as a people, the same respect that we give to a Christian as a Muslim or as a Muslim give to a Christian, let us start to give that to our own African spirituality. Let us start to... You understand? Because that is our only one of our only defense against European aggression. And that is why they, one of the first things they're destroying in Africa you know, is Africa spiritualism. You understand? And then bringing in all of these evangelists and these, these are how the weaponry coming to the country is through evangelism. Evangelism is an American product. It's run by the CIA. You understand? Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the collaboration that they and France, because it's the same thing what France do in Haiti with the help, with the help of America. Don't matter things that France is just on its own. They're, they're down there between them and the same British ear. All of them, the same bunch, the same bunch that scrambled for Africa is the same bunch that is doing what they're doing today in Africa. So Brother Kunta is right. You know, he's a, he, he was a soldier. He wasn't no diplomat and all that. He's a soldier. You understand? And this is what this is what the West is afraid of. Just as they are afraid of Idi Amin. Because Idi Amin, Idi Amin stopped from doing their bidding. You understand? You know? And this is what we have to look upon all the time, my brethren. Just blank, just blank this terrorist out of our mind. Lego is the is, is narrative and start to plant seed of our own narrative that then can grow to be mighty oak trees. Good man. For real. For real. For real. For real, man. Well said. Good on. Yes, rise up, Dr. Abu. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, Dr. Abu said this is this was an ambush. This was an ambush. Uh, my sis, uh, Sheila, uh, you heard the opening there from our brother Kunta. Uh, over to you, my sis, for any comments uh, that you would want or any contribution you'd like to make uh, to the discussion this far. I don't know where to start. Thank you very much for this. I will start with a story. Some years back mm -hmm. when I was in university in Kenya, I was invited to go for a movie with a group of friends. I'd never been to the cinema before. So I went to the big screen and as I was sitting there, I'd not, I'd not appreciated how big the screen was going to be. The screen was huge, massive, never seen anything like that in my life. Anyway, it was a Chinese movie, never seen a Chinese movie either. And in this movie, the opening was um, some people had come and they'd broken into this house and there was a small baby who was sleeping. And these people came to kill the baby, I came to kill the family, the parents of the baby and um, the baby woke up. The baby was around one week old. This baby did proper martial arts at one year. He was flying in the air and he managed to <laughs> slay everyone else. You know how these Chinese movies are. Somewhere along that movie, at one place, the chicken was fighting the cow. Really, I kid you not. And at one time, 
the snake I was fighting a samurai and the samurai was throwing guns and no, knives and it was a movie that I left the cinema thinking what was that I did not make sense of anything there children were fighting but I, and I left and I wondered what was that so now why am I telling you this story it's because I was reading on this, this story of Chad after I knew I was coming to this show I said let me go and research a little bit more on Chad and that mm -hmm. is the first problem that I had. Why am I researching about Africa? This is my continent. Why are mm -hmm. we having these nations? Why are we having these borders? These are colonial borders. Colonial people, the colonialists sat together in a room, in a conference, and decided to partition Africa. In 2021 May, why are we talking of these partitions that were not our own making? So here I was reading about Chad, me saying I'm coming from Kenya, reading about Chad, we are one people. So anyway, as I'm reading, I read about the story of the president who was killed. So I read that he'd been in power for 30 years. This is something that I'm reading on mainstream media. So brother Kunta, you will correct me where I'm wrong because I'm simply reading. I don't know anyone from Chad. So anyway, anyway, I read that he was in power for 30 years with the support of France. I read that France colonized them. So first of all, I question, why should the colonizers be supporting us? It's like you are raped and your rapist is supporting you. That is like the Chinese movie I watched. It doesn't really make sense. <laughs> so he, won, he wins an election on the 11th of April. Then there is a militia group called FACT. And this FACT is a militia group. And in their site, in their website or in Wikipedia, it says they exist to remove the Chad government. That is their motive. They exist to remove the Chad government, according to Wikipedia. So they've written out there that we are FACT. FACT stands for something. And they say, it's a French, French name, I can't pronounce it, so I just say fact how they've written, the F-A-C-T. And they say they exist to remove the Chad government, which has had one president for 30 years, who got in through a coup, meaning he removed someone to get there. So anyway, again, another question that he came through a coup and stayed for so long and got elected by 80% win. We know about elections. In Africa, again, another Chinese movie. Elections in Africa, you cannot understand them. You wonder why we go through it. Democracy is a ruse in Africa. Chinese movie, this is. Anyway, he won on the 11th. Then he decided on the 19th, he was supposed to go after you win, you take the oath of office. He decided instead of taking the oath of office, he is going to meet the rebels from fact who have written they exist to remove the Chad government. So he went to meet them. A 68 year old man, 68, went there to meet the rebels. He sustained injuries because it looks like the rebels were not ready to say, welcome, Mr. President, we know you won. Uh -uh, it was not that kind of meeting. Because we say, they say that he, he got injured and then on the 20th, he died. So after the death, the Chinese movie now, this is whereby the child has finished kicking. Now the chicken is about to come and start okay. fighting with the cow. Because now after he dies, the constitution says that the leader of the assembly, the president of the assembly, kind of like the speaker, is supposed to take over between 45 to 90 days as an election is made, is done. In this case, that is that they come up and they say no that's not going to happen we are going to take the military the military is going to take over and the head of the military is the president's son mahatma samuel so he takes over so they form a new rule the constitution is thrown by the wayside so now they form they say let the military take over now that is now the chicken fighting the cow now so you're thinking oh my way what's the chicken doing here then the snake and the samurai come to start fighting and you're like, okay, where did this come from? And this is what happens now next. The French president comes to the funeral. They are telling us there is a pandemic happening. So travel has been affected. 
So people are not traveling. In fact, this France had closed borders. It's closed borders. Right now, you can't go to France as you wish. But the president of France, mm -hmm. Macron, leaves France to attend this funeral when the country has broken into war after the death of the president. So he is not going to a peaceful country. He's going to a country that is protesting the death of the president. At the same time, he's also protesting the military taking over as opposed to the speaker. At the same time, the coup, the fact people are saying we are advancing, we are going to the state house, to the main house. So the country is in turmoil. And the president of France decides to go in. We have not even talked about the pandemic and you know Corona is out there, you know, ready to kill people. Then he flies to attend a funeral of an African president. That to me is the thing that I did not understand at all. Why is he coming? Then not only does he attend the funeral, he also is given time to speak in a funeral, to speak at the funeral. So he is honored to be there. He's given an honor. And when he speaks, it's as if he's addressing a province of France. He is not speaking like a guest at a funeral. He is speaking like a man at home. He is right at home. So I'm, in, like, I'm inclined to agree with Brother Kunta here and say that France never left. This to me is a proper movie. And mm -hmm. now the people are mm -hmm. protesting against the military taking over. And France has the audacity to say it supports this move. Now you wonder, why is France commenting on this? Why does Chad comment on France matters? Does France comment on matters to do with the UK or the US or anything? Or France feels so um, entitled that they can comment on matters to do with African matters. So that is the question that I asked. And to me, this has been like one big Chinese movie. And then I go further. As I was reading a lot about Chad. I realized that Chad is oil rich mm -hmm. and it's surrounded by countries that are oil rich. And I find that anywhere we have oil, there will always be war and there will always, always be a Western country standing there. So these are our problems as an African people. Now, our problem as an African people is, first of all, we do not know who our enemies are and who our friends are. So here I am sitting, speaking like an African people, uh, like an African person, and I was completely clueless that this was happening. And I can see the blindfold that has been put on me that I do not know that this is happening in my continent. Now, it is in my radar. I can never not know it again. And that now is somewhere that I'm looking at keenly. And as I'm, I'm looking at it more keenly, I'm realizing, you know what, these colonial borders have to go. They have to go. Because as long as these colonial borders don't go, we'll always think we are different people. And as long as we think we are different people, it's very easy to come and do these Chinese movies on us. And we'll be just in <laughs> dark. This list of the people of ours that have been killed will keep growing longer and longer. And mind you, this list is only talking about the big people out there. We have a lot of people that are not up there, out there, that are killed, that are dying. And will continue dying as long as we say, oh, I'm from Chad, I'm, I'm from Senegal, I'm from Kenya, I'm from the Caribbean, I'm from this. As long as we keep speaking like this, we are not going to go anywhere. So as an African people, we need to come together and say we are one people. Before these colonial borders came, we were one people. And the people that came and brought these colonial borders are not our friends. We should not be inviting them on our land, in our soil. We should not be going to train military in their countries. We should not be inviting them in our funerals. And if in our own country, a president can be killed in his own country after his won elections, then by all means, a stranger who has history of oppressing us should not leave that country alive. He shouldn't. These are the kind of things we should be speaking up. We need to have very, very strong conversations. Let me stop here. Thank you very much, my people, for listening. Thank you. No, I just, I just want to give you a Powerful contribution. Nice one. Uh, very insightful. Let me go back to Brother Kunta. Yeah. That's one minute. I can see um, you, you see, Chad, Chad after, you know, after the president passed away, they went to the parliament. And they asked the vice president to take over the country. The boy, they didn't, they didn't, what you say is a bit wrong. They asked, they asked the vice president to take over the country. He said himself that he's not a soldier. The country, the rebels are coming to attack the country. He's not a soldier. 
He said to them that I can't fight and I'm not well, I'm old because I'm an old man. He said to them, please don't give it to me. You, you, you the soldier, go and take over, you know, and run the country because actually, you know, so, so he, he's, he's the boy. He didn't take the power like that. He, he, went to the, he asked him, you are the vice president of the country. The law said, that, you know, you should be in charge. And the guy said, no, 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 no. I'm not a soldier. The soldier are coming to, 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 to fight to fight against each other. I'm not a soldier. You go and take over. So himself, you know, he asked them to go and create a government. So people, you know, they mix up. It's not, it's not like that. You see, actually, you know, they have a new, they have a new government here. Yeah? The prime minister, you know, he's not a military man. He's a civilian man. Okay? Have you seen the government that, that, that they created? A lot of them are civilian. He's, he said, you know, he's only there to protect the country for 18 months only. It's simple. 18 months, he will leave. But you see, France, France, the man they support, it's not a boy there, you know. France, they have their man already. You see, you, see the, you see the force that are fighting in Chad? The leader was in France. He came back last, he came back from last week. He's in Sudan waiting, waiting. He was in France. He's waiting in Sudan. So you have to be careful. They know that, you know, France, France is playing, France, the man, it's not this boy here. The man they want, you know, is called uh, Mahamat Mahdi. He was a refugee in France. He came back, he came back. He's, he's actually in Sudan. The freshman, that that the man they want, not this one here. So you see, Macron is just playing games. They kill the man, and they come to his funeral and come and cry like, like cry, cry cry hypocrisy, and they kill him because Deby Deby was trying to oppose French activity in his country and in in, in Central African Republic too. Okay, because in there in there you have the Russian there. You see the Russian that in Central African Republic, you know. Okay. So France, France has lost there. Because France, you know, they, they won't go attack Russia in that country there. Because the president, the president knew that, you know, they want to kill him. So he called the Russian. He said, Putin, come and help me. So Putin sent about a thousand soldiers in there. They're there. They're there. Okay, Where's okay. Richard? Let's get some clarification, please, Brother okay. Kunta. So we uh -huh. have a situation in Chad where uh, there are armies that have been trained by France. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are yeah, the traditional um, African soldiers who are just born fighters and born soldiers. And mm -hmm. now we have the Russians in there as well, did you say? The Russians are yeah. also in Chad. And, and what are Chad. the Russians? No, in Chad. No, in Chad. No, in Chad, but in South African Republic, the next door country. Next door country. Next door. Next door is in South African Republic. Country. Okay, let, let me bring that map up again because, you know, it'd be good for us to get to see look, what's yes, happening. Yes, I the reason yes, why, yeah, I say so is because what we do know is that there is a lot of military activity happening in the area. France is involved, yeah. you said Russia's involved, the US is probably there, yes. the UK, I don't know, you, you know, Turkey's got army bases on the continent, we know the Chinese have got armed bases, you know, but in terms of Chad, because there seems to be an increase in military activity. And as you were saying before in the picture that you painted, Chad has a history of fighting against militia groups because, you know, it's a landlocked country and there is militia yeah. activity happening and coming into the Chadian borders, you know, from all directions. So let's go to the map and uh, let's, let's take a look at the neighboring countries and where uh, these militia groups are uh, so that we can get to see what's going on and which countries are also behind uh, these uh, militia groups as well. So there we have Chad and we've got Niger, Nigeria, Sudan, uh, the CAF, uh, CAR, yes. rather, Libya. Now we all know there's a lot. Of, so on these borders now is where all the um, so-called militia groups are all around Chad. Is that right? All around, yeah. Yes. So, so we've got Libya. we know Libya and all of their militia groups. We've got militia groups coming in from Sudan, uh, from the CAR, uh, Nigeria. We know the Boko Haram and, and others. They've all got their names, haven't they? All these different militia groups, but. Our former president, who has just been taken out, 
as a soldier, he was fighting, wasn't he, against all these militia groups. I wonder if you can tell us a bit more about the wars that, uh, that he and his soldiers were fighting, put down these various militia groups. Now, those, these militia groups, we do know, are all heavily armed. So they're getting their arms from somewhere. There's a country that's training these militia groups, arming these militia groups, financing these militia groups. And if you are the president of Chad and you've got, you know, militia groups on your borders all around you, you're going to be fighting fires all the time. Give us an idea and a picture of what he was up against uh, with regards to these different militia groups, please. Okay. Okay. Um, in the north, you have Libya. You see Libya there? Uh, um, mm -hmm. Li Libya, one time Libya attacked Chad. Okay? Th there was a war mm -hmm. between Chad and Libya. Because one time Gaddafi, mm -hmm. Gaddafi claimed some land where they have petrol. There was a war. And during the war, France helped Chad. And Chad beat Libya. Okay? Mm -hmm. And um, um, the president... Um, the president, the president that, that passed away, he, he was in that war there. And at that time, he was an officer. He went to fight there. So it's him that, it's him and his man that removed the, the Libyan from, from his land. Okay. So from there now, you know, he, now you have Niger. You see Niger, Niger, Niger in Mali. That's where you have the the jihadist. So, from, from, Gaddafi, sorry to interrupt. So this, is, sorry, my brother. So this is Gaddafi who you know, is held in quite high regard um, across most of Africa. He was fighting to take territory in Chad, was he, from yeah. the Africans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that what you're saying was happening yeah, yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 he okay. did, he did. Yeah, he did. I just wanted, yeah, to, yeah, did. I just wanted because... to magnify that a bit. Mm -hmm. No, no, because I think Gaddafi also, you know, we, we don't look at him like a, a man who is... Uh, um, he, he, he's an Arab man, and he, he also had had his, his Arab Arab expansion ambition. So right. sometimes you know he, 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 he comes as a friend, but you know behind the friendship, you know, there's still like an imperial a imperial imperial uh, uh, um, plan hidden underneath. So it, yes. it's, it's a friend, but it's not it's a friend it's a friend, but it's not really a friend because he's looking for something, really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so he was about Arab expansionism. Yeah. And here yes, he uh -huh. was exactly. on Chad, on Chad, yeah, on Chad. Yeah. Yeah. On Chad. Okay. Because at this time, Chad, at this time, Chad, Chad, they have a lot of coup d'état. They have coup d'état. They have a lot of the devil of fighting among themselves. So he 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 knew that at this time, you know, because Chad, 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 Chad there was civil war. So he went there, you know, and, and grabbed the land. Okay, but after that, you mm. know, when you see Chad, after Chad, they stopped fighting among themselves, and they went to they went to now they, they got together and fight and fight against Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. the war was not a nice war. It was not a good war. It, mm -hmm. it, it was really a bad one. Okay? But, but you see, yeah. uh, um, when, when, uh, um, when Gaddafi took, took the land, the president of Chad attacked Libya inside and went to, attack, went to Libya you know, and, take, and take a land inside Libya. Mm -hmm. When Libya took a land from Chad, Chad, Chad themselves, they went inside Libya you know, and took a big land in there. You take my land, I take your land. Mm -hmm. So after that, you know, they sit down, they talk, they talk mm -hmm. after Libya give them back the land and they give back the they give back Libya the, the land because Chad Chad they're not like you know they, they are a bit you know they have that kind of they have no fear for nobody mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. okay and um the way they see right. the Europeans so that in itself is testimony yeah. no fear no fear for the European man no fear no sorry fear. I was just gonna Okay. No, I said they don't have no fee for mm -hmm. the European like, like we do. Because the school, because Chitty, Chad, Chad, they don't speak. Yeah. They're not like, they're not westernized. You see, they're not as westernized as we are. Because they're in land. So, so, so the, the western, mm -hmm. you see the western adoption didn't hit, hit them the same way that hit us we from the west coast of Africa. We have more brainwash. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see, the French system mm -hmm. is a is a system of brainwashing. They call that assimilation. Mm -hmm. To assimilate mm -hmm. it means that what you are is, is is bad. What you are is inferior. What you are is nothing. So you, for you to be a human being, mm -hmm. you have to join me and become a Frenchman. You speak like I do. You dress the way I do. Mm -hmm. 
So the French player, you know, they give a black man that kind of mind where himself, you know, he's lost. That's why if you look at people, people, people if you see people that speak French, they're always trying to, to, make, to make the image look like a Frenchman. Always, you know, so, so, so they, they want to suffer from that complex of inferiority. They're always trying to, to show something, like try to show that, you know, you know, to speak like a Frenchman, okay? And because the, 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 the understanding they give, they give the black people that speak French is so bad that they, they even can't realize that, you know, they're lost. Completely lost, com completely, com completely. Because the French education is, uh, it's not like, you see, if you go to British school, you can read some, some writer from, 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 uh, uh, um, from the Caribbean and all that. But if you go to French school, they give you French book. French book, French mm -hmm. book. So uh, you see, if you go to a French school, you know, you know about France more than you know about yourself because that's what it teach you. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's it really. For you, for you in your mind, mm -hmm. anything that, you see, yeah. let me tell you a story. The first, the first European man to write about race was a French man. They called Francois Bernier. Check that in history. In 1600, it seemed that divided the race of mankind. Who is inferior and who is superior? A Frenchman, Francois Bernier. Check that online. It seemed that it seemed that created the concept of race. Mm. And it seemed that the black man, the Negro, was the inferior one. Because we, we're ape. If you check, mm. if you check green slavery, look, the code noir, the code noir, the, the black code, the code. You know what they call the code noir in slavery? It's the book, the manual, how to control the black people. It was a code from mm -hmm. France. The code noir, check online, you see it. The code noir or the black code. Read that, it's a book from France. It was a law. They said that, they said that the slave is, a, the, the slave is just like, like a chair, like a house, like a donkey. It comes from France. Okay? So those people, you know, the, the freshman, they send a lot of people in Africa, they call anthropology. You know anthropology? Anthropology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They use that. They come to Africa, you know, they start to measure our head, our mouth. The Frenchman study the black man deeper than any white man. He's the one that knows us more. The, you see, the Frenchman, they know how to use our differences to, to, to make us fight each other. They know, you see, they, they stay in Africa for a long time, you know, they study the black people. They have a, they, they make a science of the black man mind. They call anthropology. That's why the Frenchman, they know how to design strategy to control African people. Because they know exactly how we think, they know about the tribal differences, even though it's sometimes it's not even a big thing, but they use that to divide people all that. So they know exactly how to put the string. They study the black in Africa. That's why until today, you know, they control the economy, they control the finance, they control the army, they control the schools, they control the media. And until today, since 2021, they control everything in those, those countries, everything, even the currency they control it. Because of the system they have, that system, which is a system, you know, of to, 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 to domesticate a human being. Domestication. Domestication. If, if you see the behavior of this, the, if you see the behavior of, of this black African, that's with French, sometimes you're you ashamed of yourself. You're ashamed. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you know, they, they make it so, they don't hide no more. They, some of them don't want to be white completely. When they speak here, you know, you say, what? You, you, you see? Because the fact that, you know, the thing that, you know, you have to be a fresh man. You have to act like a fresh man. You have to think like a fresh man. Being a black man is inferior. Okay? Yeah, if you say that, you know, Kunta, the, the, you say Kunta, what is Kunta? But you don't, who, who can you use there? You see? It's, it's, even, they were scared of you. Mm -hmm. As a black, the, if you speak black, if you speak black, say, oh, 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 you're aggressive. You see? That kind of people, you know, the fresh man finished the black man. He tongue him. That's why, you know, you have to forgive them, you know, sometimes when they make a mistake, forgive them because their mind, their mind was, was domesticated like, like an animal. For centuries and centuries, the Frenchman never left, they never left Africa. They control our mind until today, you know, until 2020. You see, look at Gambia and Senegal. You see Gambia and Senegal, when the British, when the British, will leave it, when the British left, left, left the Gambia, they call the Senegal is president. They say, listen, Gambia should be a Cameroon. Go together. The first, the first, the first city, no, don't accept that. Because the, the English language, you know, going to contaminate our French that is pure. You know what I said? The, the, the French president, the, the, the Senegalese president, told the Gambian president that no, we don't have a federation because the English language, you know, we come and contaminate our French language. That's what you, you see the Gambian and Senegal today. That, that shows you how French people the evil. They don't even want the Gambian and Senegal to, to go together. They try twice, it didn't work because France doesn't want that. For France, I know if, if Gambian and Senegal go together, you know, the English language 
We talk over because people don't people, people don't, they don't English more than French. French French the dying language is dead. French French the dead language. So English you know, is alive. So they're scared that if they join them together, you know, the English will take over. So they will lose there. That's why they refuse. Look at look at the government in Senegal. Look at the cut of the government in Senegal. There's no way like, like, like that in the world. But France, France, what they want it that way. Because that's the way they want it. For the own to preserve, to preserve the, because Senegal, Senegal is is, is um is is the 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 the, the bridge to, to thief Africa yeah. because Senegal is complice of France. Senegal is complice of France because Senegal is the bridge where, where France land to go in much of Africa. Anything they loot, they bring in Dakar. Anything they loot, that's why Senegal they have industry. Anything they loot, they bring Dakar, and, and that's where they process it to take it to France. Look at Senegal. Senegal is the bridge. Is the bridge? Is the bridge? To France to Senegal, to Africa. Here. So here's Senegal. This here, here. That's oh. what they use to, 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 to control the whole African continent from here. This is the headquarter of the of the colonial French army and the colonial French uh, uh, exploitation. Senegal don't have no petrol, but they have they have they have refin refineries. They don't have no petrol, you know, but they have refineries. How come they don't have no petrol? Okay, yeah. because if because 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 France France use Senegal as an industry base, anything they, they bring they bring the process in Senegal and take that to, to France. That's why that's why Senegal is the poison of Africa. That's why Senegal. That's why, sorry, it's a poison. That's it's the poison. Senegal is the virus. Is the virus that was ah. Africa Senegal? Is the virus? Yeah. Is the virus? Yeah. Is the virus the big virus? Because if you look at Senegal, Senegal politics, yeah, okay, there's no coup yeah. in Senegal. They never had a coup d'état. No had a coup. Never, never, never had a coup. No coup. Never, never, never. They vote, uh -huh. but all that is, is France that control the votes. Uh -huh. After a while, they, you yeah. know, they, they always bring the man. After, after a while, you have to go and they, after you finish, you go to France. They, they give you a house there. You chill there. That, oh, that's what wow. you do. All African, all African leaders, you know, in, in, when, when they finish the power, they go to France. That's where they go and live. So France say, welcome, welcome, you, you did a good job. Yes, go and live in Paris, you know, and, and they give you a flat, and you go there, you know, and you say, oh, I'm a big man. You're a traitor. Traitors. Yeah. All of them, you know, they live in France. All of them, they live in France. There's no African leader. That's the French, that live in Africa. Yes, thank you so much, my traitors. brother. You know, traitors. You're traitors. Traitors. Highlighting for us the extent to which you know, France has actually studied us as a people, and how yes. until this day they continue to manipulate, you know, our, us and control us, uh, you know, through the divisions that they've created, and how they've, you know, kind of elevated France to this kind of pinnacle, you know, this mountaintop that all Africans need to aspire to be like and to emulate and to want to as uh, um, aspire towards to the detriment of who we are as a people, our own culture, you know, our, our own country and development. And, and so our loyalty, you're saying, the loyalty of um, a lot of the, the French leaders in Africa, the, the, well, the African leaders who have been indoctrinated by France is to France first and not to Africa. Let me allow uh, Dr. Anu and then our sister Sheila to come in uh, to comment on what you've been saying so far, my brother, and then we're going to go back to Chad because, you know, we're looking at the military yeah. activity around Chad. Uh, yeah. So we're going to come back to that afterwards. But thank you so much for giving that us that insight into, you know, the extent to which our brothers... Uh, and sisters who are in French-controlled African countries, you know, uh, 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 and what they're actually up against. But let, let me go over to um, Dr. Abu. Welcome, uh, Dr. Abu, back to this uh, part of the conversation. Let's bring you in here, uh, my brother. Yeah, man, respect, respect to Brother Kunta and Sister Sheila for their input. You know, when the brother talk about Senegal, it's just like Sierra Leone to, to Britain. You know, that's what, that's where Britain use. Because you have to look at the ports, you know, how they use these, these ports and, 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 the, and the shores 
you know, to go inside, the inside of Africa. So as, as the brother was saying, just as though France used Senegal as his main hub, that's what the British used Sierra Leone for. That's why they could send troops there to tap up when they would have the, the problem there, you know? France, France doesn't do nothing in Africa without the nod of the other colonizers. They're all in it together. You understand? You go, you go into certain places where British control and it does English. English you have to speak. You go in a certain school and there's a big sign there, English only. You mm. understand? You know? What I'm saying to my people, man, you know, it's like we're watching an horror movie, blood. You know, see, we are, it's like, and, and we, are, we are the one that is in the movie, you know, but just because we like to watch movie, we don't want to, we don't want to admit the arrow and the carnage that we are going through. You understand? You know, and that's why they give us these little escape. Sunday morning, we we are in this commercial happiness and thank the Lord. And then Monday morning, we're still on the heart attack. And we're still on the, all of these things. You know, all of the colonizers, them, all of them, what they left is themselves. Whatsoever Africa praying to right now is not the Almighty, is European and European values. And that's why Africa is in the state that it is in. I'm telling you, you know, the state that Africa is in right now, I, you can call it self-inflicted wound. Because how can you have the colonizers thing running your life? You understand? It's full time we start to do away with those things and start to return back to ourselves. When we start to return back to ourselves, then we start to save ourselves. But we can't go to the confession box. And expect that the man now gonna know what we are doing. You understand? And a lot of Africans are glad enough to go to the confession box and even confess and, and, and grasp on their own damn family. We have to realize uh, what we're up against, you know, and start to support one another, respect one another, because we are talking about the leaders that have been taken out. What am to all of these political prisoners that them have locked up? We have some brothers and sisters in some of these African prisons locked away because they're fighting the same French and British and, and, and German oppression. You understand? That's why they have been locked there. But nobody, nobody even talk about them. You know, see, all we, all we talk about is those, is those that know that one day the chicken will come back home to roost. And this is what it's all about. You know, see, and they've been doing that to Africa. They use son to take out father, brother to take out brother. And uh, this is the game that they play. And if we don't understand it, we don't have a clue about military science. That's why some of us, we study political science so much. That's now we become a political prostitute of the West. Serious thing, because a lot of Africans, even, even here in the diaspora, they are a junkie and white privilege, and they will kill even their own family to live like white people, to be with white people, to marry to white people, and even smell like them blood. Simple as that. It's addiction blood. And as soon as we come out of that, we'll be better off. Good on. Yes, Sister Shanice, it seems like you're... Good on, Marika, Dr. Abu. Yeah, uh, reinforcing there the extent of the indoctrination. All right. Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay, go over to Sister Sheila, please. Uh, I'll come back afterwards. Sister Sheila. So much. Uh, thank, you very, thank you very much. So much has been said, and I'll just comment on this. Um, we have said a lot about Sister what Sheila? the West has Can you hear me? Yes, I can, can you hear, hear you. Me? Yes, okay. Yes. Okay. It looks like Sister Shanice, you're the one not, not hearing me. Uh, the two brothers mm. can hear me. Um, I would say that uh, we have spoken a lot about what the West has done to us. This is obvious. 
what they've done to us. And one thing that um, Brother Kunta has said that uh, is uh, one thing that Brother Kunta has said that it's very um, okay. One thing that Brother Kunta has said that stays with me is that um, the French have studied the Chad, the Chad people. And this is not something that the, only the French has done. I would say the whole Caucasian race. And when I talk about Caucasian race, I'm meaning people from the Caucasus mountain and the Asians as well. So the Chinese are in this lot, all uh, pale skinned people. I will put them all in one lot called Caucasians. All the people that have got fewer melanin as opposed to you melanin. All those people study us that have got you melanin. They study us, the African people, the Nub Nubian melanated people. Now for us, whereby we have to take responsibility for ourselves is whereby we are sitting getting studied by others while we ourselves don't know about ourselves we do not know ourselves because if we had the power if we knew about ourselves we would not sit and be studied this way because this war we're talking about physical war here for them to us it's a physical war but this is a spiritual war it's a mental war it is a war whereby for us to win it requires us to raise our vibrations. And for us to raise our vibrations, it goes down to the things that we are doing that are lowering our vibrations. Things like uh, yeah. religion, which Dr. Abu mentioned. Because right now, we're following a religion that was introduced to us by these colonialists. So for as long as you're bowing to a religion that's not yours, you've already given your power away. So if you look in this case of Chad, because we're looking at Chad here, it tells you in Wikipedia that Chad is 52% uh, uh, Muslim and 44% Christian. Then there is only 1% animism. Anytime you see the word animism, know that is African spirituality. So even they give you a bad, they give a name that has got a negative connotation. So you ask, yeah. why is it only 1%? Because this 52% Islam, 44% Christian, these are all Caucasian things. These are the things that are making the Chad people sit. Brother Kunta said they are strong people. These are strong people that sit and get studied by oppressors. These are strong people that sit and try as much as possible to dress like the oppressors, to be named like their oppressors, to eat like the oppressors, to go and get Facebook and do all these things that the oppressors do. These are people that have lost the plot. And this is not something that is only for the people of Chad. This is the something that is for the African people, wherever they are. We've got this obsession that Dr. Abu said last, in last week's session, he's called it, Dr. Abu, you said this, white privilege addiction. You gave me a new phrase there. So yes, we've got that. We want to be so much like the white people. But this is something, it's because we have not known who we are. We do not know the power that we've got. Brother Kunta here has said the people of our, when he was talking about the people of our, about the late president, and he said the people of creation, you know, the people that were there from the beginning. You know, these are the things that we do not know. And the reason why we do not know is because our eyes are focused on uh, things that are not ours. And for as long as we keep on focusing on these things that are not ours, we will always say, oh, they are doing this to us and they are doing this and they're doing that. It reminds me of a, a rat that's being eaten by a cat and a rat sitting there saying, how are we going to negotiate with the cats so that the cats don't eat us? Can we you know, come up with a meeting and a conference so that we can go and plead with the cats so that the cats you know, can treat us well? A rat and a cat should not be sitting together in the same place. It is the rat that loses. In this case, we, the Nubian melaninated people, we are sitting here giving our power away, complaining about it while there are things we can do. And as I always say, this is a journey that starts at individual level. We hear all the time that all oh, Africans come together, be united. There is no way we can be united if at the individual level you are in disharmony within yourself. If you are vibrating yeah. low, that will be a unity of people that are vibrating low. And those are people that will only gather together for the colonialists to come and say, okay, go fight your people over here. You would have made his work easier for him because you would have come together in one place. So he'll find you in one place and manipulate you from that one place because all of you are coming with your low, low vibrations. So this is a journey. 
it reminds me of my own journey. I was brought up in a very strict Christian household. Strict. I was like every Sunday, praise be the Lord. Jesus, cover me by your blood. I'm going to heaven and all that kind of thing. And if you asked me uh, what, what my image of God was, um, it was actually Sean. There is this uh, actor called Sean Connery. <laughs> to me, <laughs> that was how God looked. <laughs> that was how God looked. <laughs> and I remember at one time someone mentioned that uh, Jesus was not blonde and blue eyed and Jesus was not white. And I argued vehemently and said he was definitely white. I, I could not, if you, I did not want Jesus to be anything, I wanted him to be white. You know, he needed to be white. If you told me that he was not white, even if you told me he was Arabic, no, that was, he needed to be the bluest eyes and the blood, you know, and God needed to look like Sean Connery. I don't know why, I think it was his voice or because he wanted James Bond. That was God, yeah? As I, as I speak right now, I only recognize the supreme being of my ancestors. Okay. I only recognize the spiritualism of my ancestors. Oh, yeah. And uh, this is a journey that I did as on a personal level. And from me alone doing this journey on a personal level, it led me to open a school whereby we talk this kind of things, whereby we talk and we go back to learn about us. And from this journey, I've ended up being introduced to my people. Before, I was meeting fellow Jesus people, you know, praise God, Revelation 6, you know, <laughs> yeah. So what I'm, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, this is a journey that starts at individual level. We don't have to have quorums. It has to start no. as you as a person. When you like you start really at that level like as i That's speak right now i have a school with a lot of people that are speaking yes so i have so it starts at individual level so this is a message again for hope that the power is with us at that individual level and you don't have to go out there and land the army this army on our soils we do not need them their blood they, the african spirituality and blood are mutually exclusive we don't kill people we don't need to not in a world with so much abundance we don't need to so what we need to do at that personal level, we need to up our vibration. How do we up our vibration? First and foremost is by rejecting anything that comes from foreigners. Foreigners here are Caucasians because the things that we have, they're not for us. So things like their religion, their education, their law, their politics, their entertainment, their economics, their sex and gender, especially that one, their sex and gender, their entertainment, these things we have to say, they are gone. We do not want them. Their food, yes, their food lowers our vibrations. So if we just reach somewhere and we say, we do not want these things at individual level, you standing there on your own, you will change your vibration. Mm. And once you change your vibration at that level, Is our sister frozen? Yeah, she's gone. I think our sister's frozen. Okay. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Can you hear me? Oh, you're back. You're back with us. Okay, okay. I'm saying it starts at individual level, and we make simple changes here and there. And the first change we can make is saying, I am going to learn about myself. I am going to learn about my history. And when I say I'm learning my history, it is not going to read a book. Sometimes the history that we need is to get our old people. The old people that are not touch, catching the Bible and saying, oh, the Quran. No, 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 no. The old people that you say, don't talk to that one. That's an Obia man. Don't talk to that one. That one is this. You know, those people like those, those. We start with our own old people. For me, I actually started with my mother. And I was asking her about who her parents were and who the parents of her parents were. And just going back like that. And as we were going back, I realized colonialism is something very recent. My mother was born just before Kenya got independence. So she could see the colonial masters there. Her mother, who's alive, could remember when the colonial master was not there. So I was able to get my history beyond colonialism. I was able to know the things that the colonial master brought. And I tell you, just by that talking, 
by orally talking and by looking at the names that we had. I shared out my Christian names. I shared out all those other things. And then healing started. So for our people, it has to be a personal thing. Don't start saying we need to be united when you yourself, you are holding dear things that are brought to you by the Caucasian. Get rid of them. Starting with names and religions and educations and whatever, get rid. And you change your vibration and then you start knowing yourself. And when you start knowing yourself, people will not come and study you and you're sitting there being studied. And then the other thing, when you know yourself, you actually end up knowing the power you've got and you end up knowing how weak the enemy is. Voodoo. Voodoo, rise up, Sister yes. Sheila. Yes. Another colorful uh, presentation there. Yes. Thank you so, yes. so much. Yes. Beautiful yes. storytelling yes. you are yes. indeed. And yes. Uh, yes. Uh, lots of comments in the chat as well. Just commending you and, uh, you know, the way that you bring, yes. you know, your examples to life, yes. you know, using film yes. and, and all those personal mm -hmm. examples. Thank you so, so much. You know, you've just kind of really uh, illustrated for us and reinforced what our brother Kunta was saying about the extent mm -hmm. of the indoctrination, how it happens, you know, through religion, you know, and how we can hold on to some of the indoctrination with such a passion, you know, I want to argue and fight with our brothers and our sisters, you know, for that, what we've been indoctrinated with and, you know, rise up yourself as well for the school that you just mentioned there that's allowing for you know free thinking to start happening and 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 that's why the french control the education in the countries that they had formerly colonized and still continue to colonize and that's why the british control the education in their former colonies and countries that they still continue to colonize because from studying us they understand the power of their miseducation and and how to indoctrinate us to come out with that inferiority complex and for as long as we continue to feel inferior we will continue to look in the mirror and not like what we see reflecting back to us and not like anybody who looks like what reflects back to us as well and therefore we are more easily divided and, you know, they say in all their books, if you take away a man's culture, if you take away his language, if you take away all that he holds dear in his history, yeah, that he will be to hate himself and he will then want to love and gravitate onto anything that we put in its place. And that's clearly what's happening at the moment. Uh, Brother Kunta, you took us down that road there for the, this bit of a discussion, you know, from talking about the extent to which France continues to indoctrinate the African population. And we want to thank you um, for raising that and for sharing that with us. And for those who want more information about how uh, psychological brainwashing and indoctrination actually works, uh, can I suggest that you go to my YouTube channel and pull up one of the shows that we've done with our brother, Dr. Franklin Jones, who focuses on the psychological war that's been waged against us, the war of the mind, yeah? And uh, if we win that war and we take back our mind, once we are in our right mind, as our sister Sheila said, we wouldn't allow anybody to come around and study us, you know? And we would know when they're studying us and we wouldn't be offering up that information if we were in our right mind. Um, let me just quickly go over to uh, the group. Lots of discussion going on there. Um, I just want to uh, highlight some of the discussions uh, that was happening when our brother Kunta was talking so that we can get back now onto the, talking about Chad, the militia group activity that's happening in the area, the countries that are behind the militia group and the role of the former president as well fighting against those, successfully fighting against those militia groups to the frustration, you know, of those who were trying to grow uh, militia group activities in that region. So let me quickly go to the chat. So uh, Mr. Wilford, what's he saying? Stop begging the colonizers for better treatment. Rise up, mother, uh, Mr. Wilfred there. He's saying we have to stop begging the colonizers for better treatment. And uh, I think that touches on the comment that Sheila was making about the, the cat and the rat. Why are we, you know, trying to sit around the table with our former colonizers to beg them to improve the treatment, you know, and stop whipping us so hard or so stop keeping us in such an impoverished 
condition. You know, it's just not going to change, is it? Uh, Montu, what does he say here? After the victory of Haiti, uh, Haiti, the slave owners uh, were terrified. Uh, so they demonized the African gods and the Haitians prayed to help them win their battles. That is right. The, the Haitians, before they went into battle, they called on their mediums, their spirit mediums, and they did their war chants and they did their rituals. And when, by the time they finished, they had no mercy. They beat the French army, they beat the Spanish army, they beat the British army. All the best armies of the day, they slaughtered them and sent their soldiers back in body bags. And to this day, Europe has never forgiven Haiti for that battering that they gave them. Hence why Haiti continues to suffer until this day. Dr. Abu, uh, you signaling to jump in here? Yeah, we're just saying. That's, that's what, what the, the Mahdi in Sudan do to the British, you know. They, <laughs> exactly. they, 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 they bring they bring the African spirituality to him together. That's why in 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 that word Idina Surat al Mustaqim, the straight path, the straight path only can take you back to the source, and the source is where all of those things come from. So if you don't understand it, you know, go and check the Mahdi of Sudan and see how we defeat General Gordon and cripple them, and they're coming back with revenge. It's all revenge coming back, you know. But yeah. if we don't understand it, there, there is 72 different sects in Islam. You must find the one that's closest to your African spirituality. And that's what you must do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rise up, Dr. Abu. Yes, uh, they are a very uh, revengeful people indeed. They never forget. You know, we're told to forget our enslavement, but they never forget the batterings never. that they got, you know, when they never. came to our country, our parts of the world, you know, to try and conquer and colonize. Uh, let's uh, quickly go through some more. Mark is saying, in America, in the last five years, the Ethiopians, Nigerians, Somalians as a group is the most successful and do not return to Africa. Well, it depends what you consider success to be, uh, Mark Trey, yeah, because... You know, can we really talk about ourselves as being successful on in, in developing our success in another man's country? You know, if we're successful, if we're having a, if we're running a successful business somewhere in Europe, shouldn't we be looking at, at, at that as a loss to Africa? You see, and this is the indoctrination. We have been given an image of what success is supposed to look like, but success is probably, you know, what president, the former president of Chad was doing, stopping outside forces from taking over his land and from recolonizing Chad. Isn't that more successful than running? But, but you know, this is where we've got to redefine for ourselves what success is. Success is having, you know, um, a family where all the family members are well supported, uh, 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 working together cohesively, you know, you, I think we, we just really need to start redefining these terms. And, and so we value the contribution because, you know, it helps us to, you know, start thinking outside of the box. Um, watching the Hawks is saying it's impossible to unite because of foreign religion. That's what's happening in Nigeria. You know, absolutely, mm. I agree with that. Foreign religion, you know, and basically we say foreign religion. These are the religion of our former conquerors. When they came in and they conquered, they imposed their religion onto the people who they conquered. So we are and were a conquered people. We had, you know, the religion of Islam imposed upon us. We had the religion of the Europeans uh, imposed on us when they conquered us after Islam. And so here we are today, you know, um, still holding on to the religions of our former conquerors. And, you know, you're right. You know, there, there are religious wars happening in parts of Africa. Where we're killing each other, you know, for another man's religion. And that's why um, Brother Rasul, when he was with us last strong, said, The day we as Africans stop killing each other is the day Africa will begin to rise. 
Uh, I'll just do one or two contributions. Lots of big ups uh, for our, our panel members. Um, let's see uh, if I can find any. Okay, gone, that's gone right down to the bottom there. So thank you very much for your uh, contributions. What's this one? The Roman Catholic Missionary Project in Africa is a scam. Mm -hmm. The whitewashed, yeah. uh, they whitewashed uh, the so-called tailored religion to oppress Africans. Absolutely. Uh, about two years ago, uh, a blonde man walked uh, some streets in Kenya and caused vehicles to stop. They thought Jesus had returned. Wow, wow, wow. For real. Yeah, there were thousands of Nigerian <laughs> doctors and business people in America. Yeah, uh, and uh, they believe in the white Jesus. And, and that is true because, you know, Nigeria was conquered by the British. And so they brought Christianity with them. And what they're realizing is, is that in the examples where we're talking about the power of us as a people, it's in um, areas and during times when we reverted back to our African spirituality. Uh, so let's go back to the discussion that we were having on Chad, the uh, yeah, really important discussion, agree. because there's a lot of okay. militia group activity happening on the, uh, around those borders. And, uh, okay. you know, we want to come away more enlightened. Uh, so, thank you, everybody. Let's go back to Brother Kunta uh, again, and um, let's go back to, um, to the other, yeah. Let's go back to the to the picture. Can I show you the the, the map? Okay, that's good. That's great. That's great. Okay. All right. Now, in the south here. Yes. In the ahead. south. In the south, yeah. In the south, you have Central African Republic. The south, the south here, yeah. Here, mm -hmm. here, there, here. You have, you have about three different group of rebels, three different groups fighting here, fighting in, in that in this mm -hmm. this country here. This country is big. This country also is a big country also. This one is about six hundred and um, six hundred and thirty thousand square kilometer miles. So it's a big one. It's, it's big. So now here. The president, he was fighting against the Muslim because the Mus here, you see the Muslim, they, they come from Sudan and they attack this country here. So they wanted to bring a Sharia here, but here you have the Christian. So there's a war here. When they were fighting among themselves, um, the French, they supported this president here. So he came to power and they removed the rebels. The rebels went back to Sudan. But after a while, yeah. After a while, they came back. But this time, they came back from Chad. Chad here, Chad here. So those rebels there, you know, they said that, you know, they said that, they said that, they said that, uh, um, Debbie sponsored them. So if you come, so if you go in this country here, they, they didn't like Debbie because they said Debbie sponsor the rebels that are fighting in, in the country here. So what he did, you know, he called the Russian. So the actual Russian they here. R Russia has, has managed to control this area here. They have killed all the rebels. Most of them. That's why a lot of people think that you know the Russian came up here and kill and kill this guy here and kill uh, uh, Debbie because Debbie was sponsoring the rebellion here. Okay, so that that's one group. Okay, you see Sudan. You see in Sudan here, Sudan. Yeah, so, the, the, so Brother Kunta. Yeah. Sorry, Brother Kunta. Sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt you. Just to let you know that we can't see where you're pointing to. So if uh, you can just tell sorry. us. And then I'll, I'll try right. to find it on the map. But we can't see where you're pointing. Oh. So what we have been okay. hearing was that there was uh, Muslims were fighting on the border Again, of Sudan, yeah, and Chad. No, no, it's, no, no, no. In South African Republic. In South, in South African oh, Republic. South Africa. So the, yes. Central. Yeah. Okay. In Central oh. Africa, here. There's a war here. The Christian against the Muslim. Here. In this country here. But now, they make peace. So now, now they have a government in here. So, so, the, so the war here, the war is nearly finished. Here. Because the Russian came here. This man called the Russian, and the Russian came, you know. And the Russian came there, you know, with the, the full power, and that's it. They clean the place. So they're here. They're there now. So now Russia is here. Russia controls this country here. Okay. Right. So where, where is here? Where is here? 
Where is here? Where? Central. We can't central, see where your point central, is, Barbara. Um, central. Just, central. Just, central, Republic. That, central Republic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's where the Russians are. Yes. It's controlled by Russia. So the, the Russians came here. Oh. Yes. Mm -mm. They came there. Right. They saved the president from the rebels. So, 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 so now you know they are there, isn't it? It's them that come okay, to the country. So let me this, just this check. Sorry to interrupt. So we've got. Uh, so there was fighting going on between the Christians and the Muslims in the Central African Republic. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. the Russians came in, intervened in that war. Yeah, and who was on the other side? Who 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 were who was supporting the rebels it's on the other side? Do we know? No, they say it's, it's Debbie because they were Muslim, and Debbie's a Muslim. Was it the French? You see, right. the, the Chad president that passed away is this Debbie. So the Muslims the supported by by Muslim by Debbie uh -huh. by Debbie himself, the one that yes. passed away. They accuse, him, they accuse him of supporting okay. the rebels in the okay. south. So, so, so Russia, 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 when they uh -huh. came, they wanted to kill him because they think that you know he's mm -hmm. a danger to them because they coming to they coming to kill the rebels, but he's the one that gave the weapon. Okay, mm -hmm. he's the one. He was the one that sponsored mm -hmm. the war in Chad. It is Debbie. Right. So, so Russia, so Russia, 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 when they came, right. they were fighting against the rebels, you know. But at the same time, you know, they, they wanted also to, to kill him too because he's the one that sponsored the rebellion in the country that Russia are. That's why a lot of people think I know the Russian kill him. Not even the French, right. the Russians, because he's the one that sponsored uh -huh. the rebellion, uh -huh. the rebellion in that part of Africa. So the Russia, you know, that they, they said that you know the Russian, you know, and the rebels they join together, you know, and they find, you know, you know, and they, you know they just eliminate him. To stop, to so, stop the war. Um, yeah. What was the war? So we know that there was a religion was part of it. There was a religious war going yeah. on between yeah, Chad yeah. and the Central African Republic, and this is Africans uh, fighting Africans, basically. African, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Uh, based on other people's, you know, clothing. One's wearing the clothing yeah. of the Arabs. The other the clothing of the Europeans, Christians the and Christians, Arabs. Exactly. Africans fighting yeah. Africans in the name of religion. Yes. And so we had the president of Chad, the former president, uh, who was a Muslim, fighting That's against also. his brothers in Central Africa. Exactly, exactly. I think exactly. brothers in Central Africa. Republic. Republic. Um, was it to try and increase Muslim, uh, the Muslim uh, religion into Central African Republic? To take over for yes. the Christians. Yes, yes, that was the so plan. So he was, was trying to extend his, his influence or Arab influence into Central African area. Republic. The Russians Exa exactly. came in. Yeah, the Russians yes. came in, backed the president the of the Central African Republic. Big battle yeah. there, and Chad moved the back. And yeah. what we're saying here is that likelihood is is that it was the russians that took out that, uh the president yeah yes because of chad be, because yeah, yeah yeah because he because he because he was a danger to to the russian you know and, mm -hmm. and to the country that they, they, they came to protect because he's the one that's supposed to deliver in there that, that's what they're saying there if, if you go to this country they say that they say all the war here is debbie behind it debbie yeah it is debbie and you know this the tribe here, you see the tribe, wow. and the same tribe. Same, same tribe, you know, same people, you know. Same tribe, you feel, same, same language, same language, same name, everything here, in this part here. People are the same people. They live here, what, you see like, like Senegal in Gambia. Which part, you know, of Which part are you from? I'm talking about Chad and South African Republic. Right, from Gambia, so you're saying, okay, let's look at the map. No. So from Gambia, then it's the same tribe, from Gambia all the way through to Chad. No, 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 no. I said the tribe. No, no, no. I said the, the tribe, the, the tribe in the border of Chad, and Santa, Santa, uh -huh. Santa, Santa, Santa are the same people. Right. Central, oh Central my Central gosh! Republic. So the center here, the center. So we've got same tribes. 
some are, some are Christians, some are Muslim. And but they're the same people. Yeah. They're the same people. They have the same language. Wow. But, 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 but they just live in two different countries. Wow. You see? Because, like, you see... Just first, a different the, the ideological mindset. Same tribe, same people. same people. But different, different, different ideology. Mm -hmm. Just a different mindset. Same people. That's it's the mind. It. It's the mind. Yeah. It's the mind. It's the mind. It's sad, the mind. Sad. You can't believe that. State of affairs. <laughs> wow. The and my brother, we know yeah. that on the border of Nigeria, there's another. There was another. There were other problems there that the president was fighting, yes, yes. trying to that, stop. That's to Boko stop Haram. Of Boko Haram. That's Boko Haram. Yeah. So, but Chad came there, hmm? and yes. they, be, they became there. You know, and stop it because they became there. They became the Chadian. They, they run, you know, you know, they clean the place, they clean the place, they clean, they clean the north and all that. It's Chad did that. Chad came there, you know, just run them down, quick. That's why. That's why. This is Debbie. Debbie also maybe they're kill him because all the jihadists hate him. All the jihadists wanted this man to, to, to die also. So they were they were saying like mm -hmm. maybe you know maybe some so some we jihadists. had military activity. Yeah. So we had wars going you on here, him? my brother. Boko Haram. He was fighting Boko Haram in the Persian there. And mm -hmm. on the Great Lakes. The, somebody's obviously armed. Somebody's army Boko Haram. Some, you know, one of these nations is training Boko Haram. So there is a yeah. nation that has a vested interest in, you know, their, that particular war there. So that would have been who? The, the Americans or the British? Because Nigeria, you know, Boko Haram. No, I think that's the, the U.S. Is it not? Uh, no, I think that the accused, the accused. Uh, Who's uh, behind uh, Boko Haram? They say France sponsor. France, they say it's France that sponsored the rebels. France. France is sponsoring the rebels, the Boko Haram rebels. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what they say. Yeah. So that's, it's, it's I mean, it's so easy. If we have our our investigators on the ground, it's so easy to know and find out who is sponsoring these rebels. All you have to do is capture the rebels, seize their arms, and see where they've got their arms from. Then we'll know who's supplying them with arms, who's supplying them with, the, with their military gear and, their, and the equipment that they've got, and it should be very easy to detect from there, you know, who is arming them. And of course, and then there's, you've mentioned the military act, uh, and the militia group activity around Libya, and what about yeah, Niger? What about in this area here? A bit soon. No, you see, Niger, Niger is big, is big, uh -huh. is bigger, is big, is big as Chad. It's big as all. It's one million, one million something square. Right. Niger is big as all. It's big. Okay? But you see, Niger, right. rebels, they, they come from Mali. You see Mali? Mali, you see Mali, you see Mali on the top of, of, of Niger. Rebels, they, they, they come, mm -hmm. they come through, through, through Mali and they enter Niger and they attack Chad. Because Naj, you see, Naj, oh, Naj is big. You see, yeah. you see Mali, you see Mali. They, they, yeah. they enter, they enter through, through, yes. through Niger, yeah. and they hit Chad. Because, because yeah. you see, Niger is not, it's not. They're not really like, you know, it's it's big, but it's empty. It's empty. Uh -huh. The border is empty. Yeah. Oh. You, you look, look at the border. The border oh. it's a long border. Yes. So, that so, tells so me the, that there is the a lot of genocide. genocide. That's probably yeah. happened there they come at some from point Mali in our history. And, and, you know, that's it. Yeah, they come from Mali. And they destroy Chad. So, even the rebel, um, Chad even the seems to have been a magnet. Chad seems to have been a magnet mm -hmm. for a lot of uh, the kind of jihadist, so-called terrorist activity that they're trying to escalate on the continent. You know, why was it yeah. such a focus? Uh, why was it, you know, why was there so much uh, militia group uh, activity around Chad? Be uh, because uh, uh, um, Africa, Africa is the future. Mm -hmm. Africa is the future. You know, everything, everything that, that mankind needs is in Africa. In this area here of, of the Sahara, it's full of gas, gas, petrol, manganese. Even you see water, you see water. Water to drink, mm -hmm. water. That mm -hmm. area, you see the area there? It's water underneath, it's plenty of water underneath. 
plenty of water mm. underneath. Okay. Yeah. So well, we this haven't water, even talked about the Cameroons, and because there's war going on there as well, a lot of fighting. No. And that, that, that's France. That's France. Yeah, that's France. You see France. Yeah. France. This Cameroon. They, they, are, they are present for fifty years. Fifty. Mm. He's there. Fifty years in power. Fifty years. He's mm -hmm. old, but he's still there. Mm -hmm. You see, that shows you. That shows you. You know, the man. The, the man. The man. The man. He can't. He can't. He can't even talk properly. But he's sitting on the chair. For the equaling Paul Bia. He's there because because France love the old people. They, do, they, they don't like the, the French people. You know, the, the scale of the young, young young people. They hate them. They want the old man. Seventy years. You know, seventy four yeah. years. That, that's what they love. They yes. love the old. They love the old generation. They hate the young one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in Africa, you know, if, if you look at the leader, you know, the, the leader of Africa, you know, they all, they all old. All of them. Nobody's young. My brother. Too young. Too, too young. Yes, let me just allow a little interjection here from uh, Dr. Abu and Sister Sheila. Dr. Abu, um, wow, you know, so much militia group activity going on on the continent, and we, you know, we've just gone underneath it a little bit more. What what comes to your the mind war, here, my brother? The war in Africa. We have to understand what the war is. It's called a Abraham Abrahamic war. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Because all the part of them that is fighting, Abraham is the star in them thing. Him is the man. It's true. It's true. You know, I'm not lying. It's true. It's true. And that's why, the reason why they, they have these old leaders in Africa, because they want to tell you that Abraham did have a child when he was that old man. They give you all. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, my people, the Bible and the bank is the same. One rob you of all your profit, and one give you a lot of false profit. You know, see it, you know, and this is this is where we are today. You understand? You know, an African who is in Europe and think he's successful is not. He's just sucking seed. He succeed, but he doesn't. He is not success, and he's here sucking all of these European seed, and he want to bring that same behavior to Africa. Simple as that. You know, we have to we have to we have to acknowledge what we're up against. And start to use our own narrative. You understand? You know, I don't mm -hmm. succeed, especially in this country, because you can't get good tambourine seed, mango seed, and guinea seed for suck. So I don't bother with the succeed business. You understand? You know, I am successful because I am an African. Simple as that. Good on. Vodum, vodum. Uh, we've got a request from Delongo. Uh, Delongo, I've just sent, I've just posted the link so that you can come backstage. Delongo, uh, uh, Diogo, you can jump in. I've just posted the link in the chat. Click that and uh, come backstage. Yeah. Uh, sister, uh, my sister Sheila, yeah. over to you, my sis. Thank you. It's been an honor to learn so much and to hear from our people, my panelists, as well as uh, the people contributing in the show. What I would say is, first of all, to give you thanks that we, to all of us for staying for this amount of time, listening and engaging. Because one problem that we have as Africans is the problem of fatigue. We get so tired to talk about our problems and solutions. Immediately we start talking and say, these are our problems and this is the way we should solve them. Because when you talk about problem, you're just putting the scope and then you give a solution. You don't deliver the problem. Our people get tired, 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 tired. They do not want to engage further. When you talk about colonialism and slavery and you know white oppression and white privilege and white supremacy, they tell you those are things that happened a long time ago. They're not affecting us now. Or you know what? We are only passing on this earth. We are heading to heaven. Or you know what? God has blessed us with his blood and we are covered and all that kind of nonsense. We tire, we get so tired. And there are those people that are here that um, the way we've been talking about there is no success in the West and the way we've been talking about how the French are encroaching in these African countries with um, putting all these militia, all these militia groups, 
These militia groups are made of Africans, fighting fellow Africans, but the, their puppets, the puppet master is the colonialist. And it is not only in Central Africa where we are looking at and West Africa. This is in East Africa. This is in South Africa. This is everywhere in Africa. There is a colonial master that is, yeah. you know, playing us like puppets. Some are using militia groups. Some are using the government itself. Like in my country, Kenya, it, we don't, it's not the militia. It's the government itself that is now the militia. It's the one attacking the people. So, but you find when you want to speak these conversations to our own people, because we are our own saviors, we cannot get saviors coming from anywhere else. They get tired. They don't want to engage in the discussion. They are tired. But these are the people that if you say we are going for a 40 day fasting, you know, praying and fasting as there is fasting happening now within the Muslim community, people have no problem following these Abrahamic things. Then there is no tiredness. Then there is no fatigue. When we are going to these colonial schools, because the schools we have now, they're all white supremacy areas. All the school, the primary, the high school, the university, they are just places to go further white supremacy. We commit money, time, energy. We send our children there the whole day from morning to evening. They are there. They are no, there's no tiring there. No tiring. But when it comes to having these conversations about how we can emancipate ourselves, we get tired. We cannot even think. So for us that have participated in this conversation for this amount of time and those that keep tuning in to our shows, not only here at the Galaxy Radio, any shows of ours, we say thank you. Don't get tired. We are each teaching one another. And for Brother Kunta, thank you. You have taught me so, so much today. And this, again, is the other lesson for our people. Stop going to look for information from the mainstream media whereby there's lies there. We are dealing with the kings and queens of deception. Their media lies. It is best to get Brother Kunta who tells you the reality as it is on the ground. Any day, you rather get Brother Kunta, not go out there to read what was said by who, you know? You better get Dr. Abu to tell you. You better get Sister Shanice to tell you. So these are the things I'm telling our people. We need to wake up and know that we are our own saviors. There is no savior coming who died on the cross and all that kind of thing. It is us. Thank you, my people. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Sister Anna. Sheila. We have just three minutes before the top of the hour. We've got a brother who wanted to jump in, uh, and then we're going to start the next live. Uh, so I have posted the link for the next live. I will repost it again. But uh, let me allow Brother Digo to jump in here, and I think we may have to continue this conversation uh, next strong because there's so much more that I know our Brother Kunta wanted to cover. Brother Digo, welcome. Uh, good evening, and thank you for having me. Let me just ask you something. Your next live is, is today? Your next live link. Our brother's frozen. I think our brother has next frozen. Oh. Yeah. Is it? The next like, like live link is, is. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we. Yeah, you're, I think you're you. coming in and out, but we're hearing you now. Okay, go on. Uh, I'm, I'm from Mozambique in Africa. We we are going through uh, a kind of a war now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because in the in our most wealthiest area, which was attacked by ISIS, so we need to understand that the African leaders they they in how can I say they 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 are in business deals with the European yeah. nations, so they benefit sure. from these wars that happen in Africa. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, sure. They benefit, and we have a, a really difficult problem as Africans to solve, and it's time for us to start debating how to solve such problems, because we already know what's happening, but the, is what we should start speaking about. Interesting. Absolutely. Even most definitely. But I feel like we you know, you know, my brother, I think we're gonna to have to pick up this maybe next strong. Please do try and join us. We say next strong instead of next week. Please try and join us. Tell us know what's happening in Mozambique. 
We know there's war happening there. Uh, I've got a, another live that's, I've just realized the time we've gone over. Um, so I just want to use this time to thank you for coming on board. Please get ready to come back next week to share with us. Sister Sheila, Dr. Abu, Brother Kunta, thank you all so, thank so you, much. Thank you. Okay, thank I'll just you. post thank you. The, the link for the next live show with uh, our leader, Mandaka, another powerful, powerful leader. The link's in the chat. Please just copy the link and uh, head straight up there now. We're going to go there now. Dago, if you want to join us there. Kunta, Dr. Abu, if you want to join us there, you're welcome. More love, family. More love. I'm going back. I'm going back.